Hey, Astra Kids, and welcome back. This is your May 2021 horoscope for Gemini Moon or Gemini Ascendant. So starting off here in the month of May, on the 1st, we have Mercury shifting into the sign of Taurus. So Mercury is now leaving behind Aries, which is this very active, adventurous, lively energy that we discussed back in the month of April. April. So as we've been going through this transit of Mercury and Aries, there's been energy all over the place. This has been crazy as Mars and Mercury are not friends. Mercury and Venus, however, are great friends. And so as Mercury comes into the sign of Taurus, this grounds this energy, this makes this more practical, where this logic, this communication becomes much more grounded. We're able to navigate this energy much better here, where you will feel this groundedness coming into the month of May. Now, along with that, Uranus will meet up with the sun on the first as well, for those of you who are following those three extra planets. And so this is an interesting energy as our consciousness is being exploded through this Uranus transit. So this is a great time for this flash of inspiration, this insight, where we can see these unexpected changes coming in through our consciousness, through our awareness. Now, moving forward here to the 4th of May, may the 4th be with you. Venus is shifting ahead into the sign of Taurus, where we'll meet up in this conjunction with Mercury. This is a great influence. Here we can see the communication style. We can see the way of conveying logic and understanding coming into this peaceful, more grounded energy as Venus is at home here in the sign of Taurus and giving the support, giving the aid to Mercury as well. This is a great transit for practice thinking, for decision making, for negotiating as we're going through this transit here of Mercury and Venus in Taurus. Along with that, Mercury is going to meet up with Rahu later on here on the 4th as well. This is a great position also as Mercury and Rahu are friendly to one another to a certain extent. This will give great aspiration great inspiration towards thinking, towards researching, towards collecting data and information. Remember that Rahu is a planet of obsession. And so Rahu is also connected to technology. It is connected to research. And so anyone who is planning on learning a new subject, anyone who is planning on doing deep research, anything that is involved in writing, this is a great time as Rahu is going to blow up this Mercury energy where this gives us a tremendous amount of curiosity, a tremendous amount of communication that we can use at this time. On the 13th of May, Venus will also meet up with Rahu. Venus and Rahu are great friends to one another. Venus, of course, because it is the planet of luxury, of beauty, of wealth, of attraction. And Rahu, again, being this planet of obsession, it wants more, it wants to gain something. It is an ambitious planet. And so Rahu and Venus get together and the things that you want to achieve, the things that you want to gain and attract into your life. This amplifies this. This gives you the ambition to achieve these things that you would like. And so you can see, especially for those of you who have Venus placed in a good condition within your chart, this gives you the ability to acquire the wealth, to acquire the luxury, to acquire the possessions that you are looking towards throughout this transit here in the month of May. As we move forward on the 14th of May, the sun will shift into Taurus, marking a new focus, a new center of consciousness as we are putting our focus now into this more stable, more grounded, more peaceful energy. Remember that the sun was exalted in Aries, where we had all of this energy, we had all of this drive, all of this liveliness. Now, as the sun comes into its enemy sign of Taurus, this is where the sun loses its energy, because remember that the sun and Venus are not friends. So here the sun is calmed down, it's slowed down in the sign of Taurus, where this is a great time 
to relax, to go inward, to ground yourself, to slow all of this energy down and to really bring yourself back into the present. Moving forward here on the 18th of May, Venus will meet up with Mercury once again. So this is a huge time here again of this communication where we're using our speech in a beautiful, peaceful way. So this is great for communication. This is great for writing. This is great for negotiation, any deal making that you are trying to get across during this time. Moving forward here on the 19th of May, the sun will meet up with Rahu. So now we're getting closer to this eclipse season as the sun is coming closer to the position of Rahu. And remember that wherever Rahu is, it is going to explode. It's going to give this illusion of this bigger image or this bigger illusion than what it may seem to be and so here we want to be careful as rahu can explode the ego this can give a strong sense of self and so this is where we can see a lot of ego issues coming up with rahu here with the sun this is a great time for confidence this is a great time for stepping up and moving forward taking the risk taking the action to get the things done that you want in your life but once again be careful of that expansion that explosion of the ego that can take place here during this transit now all of these planets of the sun of venus of rahu of mercury are all going to receive a fourth aspect over from jupiter and aquarius so this is really going to expand the knowledge expand the insight again with all of these placements there's so much brilliance there's so much practicality here where we can use this knowledge in a more grounded way in a more practical way towards our goals towards the things that we want to get done as this energy is slowed down it's calmed down here in the the sign of Taurus. On the 23rd of May, Saturn will station retrograde, and we will talk about this in a future video. But this is a major time of going back and looking over the structures, looking over the routines, looking at the things that you have in place, and making sure that you have the proper discipline, that you have the proper order, the proper structure in your life. This also affects us collectively as Saturn is a societal planet. This is all about the structure the rules that are put in place here in our physical construct moving forward on the 26th of may mercury will shift into gemini into its own sign and so here the intellect is very high this becomes a strong position of communication of writing of connecting to others of pulling in information from different places and you can feel the curiosity you can feel the adventure starting to increase here of wanting to learn wanting to explore more where this can really help in expanding your knowledge depending on where mercury is positioned in your chart on the 28th of May, Venus will shift into the sign of Gemini as well, where it will meet up with Mercury once again. So again, this communication style of negotiating, of making peace, of resolving issues, of being able to make deals continues to increase here with this aspect, this conjunction between Venus and Mercury. On the 29th, we will see Mercury station retrograde as well. So we will get into that in a future video. A lot of major things that are coming here. Now for the position of the moon, I will talk about that in a future video, but major moments that we will go through here are on the 11th of May when we will have a new moon in the Kritika Naksatra. So this will fall at the end of the sign of Aries. And this will be an interesting one as it will be in a conjunction with Uranus. We will talk more about that in a future video. Also, we have the big event of the full moon lunar eclipse happening in Anurata in the sign of Scorpio here on May 26. So that is a huge event as that will shift us into eclipse season. For those of you with a Gemini moon, Gemini ascendant, we have the sun, Mercury, and Venus, which will all be shifting back into your 12th house. And we will close off 
the end of this month of May with Venus and Mercury also shifting into your first house where Mercury will station retrograde. So we have a lot that is going on here as far as your 12th house goes. And of course, Rahu is back in that 12th house where this is a major time of tapping into your imagination, tapping into your dream world. This Rahu energy taking you deep into your imagination, into isolation, where you can think very deeply, you can go deep within and pull out this deep insight. And especially with Mercury and Venus, which will be there, a lot of creativity, a lot of talents that you can pull from deep within the subconscious. So this is a great time for those of you with the Gemini moon, Gemini ascendant to go into meditation, to go deep within, to look within and to tap into this other realm, this other dimension of thought. And so especially meditation, especially relaxation, especially taking that time to yourself, taking those breaks where you can pull through some great inspiration that will help you during this time. And as we come forward with this energy moving into your first house, this becomes a great time to bring those dreams, to bring that imagination out to the surface. And of course, as Mercury comes retrograde, it'll be a good time to review all of this as well as you have all of this skill to pull from. Now, Saturn is also going to station retrograde as well in your eighth house. So this becomes a very interesting time of really looking at the changes, looking at the growth that you have gone through throughout this time and seeing how the different struggles, the different obstacles have helped you to grow and change over time. And so for those of you who are not seeing success, this Saturn retrograde is a huge reminder of what you had to go through to get to your success in the past and how this process, how this journey of going deep within, of going through this internal process where it seems like things are not progressing or going the way that you want them to, where you are reminded to go back in the past and look at the accomplishments, look at the things that you have done already. This is your motivator. This is what is going to help you during this time. Now, of course, we will also have a new moon back in your 11th house. This becomes a great time to start a new project, to work towards a new goal in your life. And you can see a lot of abundance coming in as this is going to be in your 11th house of gains and support. Along with that, we will see a full moon lunar eclipse which we will talk more about in a future video happening over in your sixth house. So this is very intense. This is very deep here of letting go of these obstacles and conflicts that you have in your head. So for those of you who are holding on to these blockages, holding on to these doubts, these worries that you have, great time to clear this out during this full moon lunar eclipse. Again, we will go deeper into this in a future video. To finish it off, for those of you with a Gemini moon or Gemini ascendant, I pulled some cards from the Vedic Astrology deck. So starting off here, we have the Dhanishta Naksatra. This is a huge time to stay on your purpose, to stay on your path. Again, this is a time to look at the past, look at the lessons, look at everything that you have gone through and use this to continue to move forward along your journey. So this is not a time to give up. This is not a time to back down. This is time to focus on your success, to focus on your dreams of what you want to accomplish. Second here, we have Venus. So this is a time of your creativity. Once again, we talked about that 12th house activation, where this is a time to tap into your creativity, to tap into your talents, especially with Venus in its home sign in a conjunction with Mercury. This is a huge time where skills and talents are there for you to tap into. We have the Ardra Naksatra. And so this is a huge time for you, once again, to focus on your creativity. This Ardra Naksatra being about experimentation, about new ideas, about experimenting and trying new things. And so this is a huge time to focus on integrating these new ideas, this new found creativity and inspiration from that 12th house. 
Second here, we have the fifth house of creativity. Once again, time to tap into your skills and talents to move towards something new that you can create and build, especially as our next three cards here are the Ashwini Naksatra, Uranus, and Rahu. Time to strive towards a new goal, a new outlet a new interest to put your new ideas to the test to move forward with this ashwini energy we think of this power the stamina of the horse where this is time for you to move forward towards your next journey your next experience and you can find some unexpected success in this if you are willing to use that creativity to use that expression that you have through this uranus lord brahma energy coming through here as well and lastly here, the Rahu North Node, this is a time to move towards your ambitions, your desires. What is it that you want to achieve and accomplish at this time? So this has been your May 2021 horoscope for Gemini Moon or Gemini Ascendant. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like as well as a comment. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button along with the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new content. As you can see here, we have some major things to talk about, including a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio. So you don't want to miss out. Make sure to hit that notification bell. If you are interested in learning more on Vedic astrology, there is a course available in the Facebook group, Astrology Lessons with Daquan Jones. There's a link down below in the comments along with the description. I want to thank you all so much for joining. I hope you all have a great day and I will see you in the next video.